Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stand. Uh, we are joined by Christian Falk today. Uh, very welcome on the show, Christian. Hello to Manchester. Hello. And um, look, it's uh, I'm sure a lot of people know who you are. We had about four years ago, everybody found out about uh, Demarcio because of Paul Pogba and uh, Mkhitaryan and no signings. And, and Fabrizio is obviously somebody we've had on the show before. Uh, Christian Falk uh, um, is a uh, the head uh, sport writer for Sport Build. Um, with Fabrizio, it's here we go. With Christian, it's um, true or not true with his replies. Um, if you're not aware of, of of Christian, you can follow him on Twitter at CF Bayern. But um, just some of the things that I, I've seen uh, over the last few months, uh, spoke in March back about um, Bellingham to Dortmund, um, very good in relation to Havertz, been speaking about Thiago, Sancho. And look, this transfer window is just all over Um the Bundesliga in Germany at the moment. It's really exciting and there's so much to discuss. But uh, what I want to start off with, and I think every Manchester United fan will be wanting to know uh, what your thoughts are on, on Jaden Sancho. I must just say, just talking about social media last night, we do get these Twitter accounts that they, they don't write, they're not journalists, they're not, they don't write for anybody. They just, they have secret sources. And there was a story last night that Manchester United and, and Borussia Dortmund have agreed a fee for Jaden Sancho and it will be announced at the start of August. Now, I, I don't for one minute think that's true, but uh, what's what, what's your update on, on Sancho and, and Manchester United and, and Dortmund as things stand today? Uh, I think uh, the news is not true. <laughs> so um, I think there is uh, a lot to talk about uh, Sancho at the moment between the clubs. Um, but uh, there's no uh, decision yet. Uh, I think everybody has a feeling that it will happen. But uh, I think it's always a problem uh, when the clubs are talking about money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, Dortmund has a very, very uh, clear amount of money they want to have. Uh, they're always uh, 120 million euros. I don't think they will get it this summer, but uh, still 100 million euros would be also a lot of money. Um, and a few things are clear, um, perhaps um, that's why the people are talking about August. Um, Dortmund uh, definitely wants a, tr um, a decision till the 10th of August because uh, they're, they're starting um, the main part of the training season. And uh, till there, um, they have to get the bid. And the bid should be over 100 million euro. So <laughs> we will see if, if it's happened. But, uh, I think Sancho is pushing a little bit um, this deal and Dortmund knows that already. Of course, uh, he wants to go to Manchester United and uh, you see uh, we have a new English talent here in Germany. Um, um, I'm sorry for you that he's not in Manchester. I'm very sorry, yeah. <laughs> I like Bellingham. We'll talk about <laughs> Bellingham actually. But yeah. um, uh, just on Sancho, um, that, that, that's something I was going to say, that there, there, there has been some story, I think, from Sky Germany that Sancho is homesick. I, I, I don't know why he'd be homesick after two or three years in Germany, but maybe he just wants to move back to the Premier League. Yeah, you know, um, for an English player, you know, it's uh, I think for the most uh, players in the world, the Premier League is the league uh, to go. But, uh, of course, for an English player, it's much more interesting. But uh, I remember when I was uh, in St. George's Park, uh, we were visiting uh, where you build your talents. Uh, I was talking about a youth coach of, of Sancho, and then uh, he gave a short message and he was writing, oh, I'm playing tomorrow for Dortmund the first time. It was really, really nice to see. And uh, we were talking a lot of Sancho and we we're talking about a lot of his talent. And uh, it's amazing which education he made in Dortmund. And I think these are the reasons why uh, so many English players are um, at the moment focused on Bundesliga because, you know, in Germany they get the chance. Uh, we don't have so many big stars like you in the Premier League, but uh, we let uh, young players play. And uh, it's amazing. He saw Sancho the last season. He's, he's really, really, really good. Uh, that's why we would like to keep him one year more if you're allowed. But <laughs> it's getting difficult for us, we know. Um, you said one year more there. There is definitely, um, well, you said that you feel that, that Sancho wants the move. How how stubborn um, do you think Dortmund would be on this deal if, if, say, Manchester United said, we can't go above 90 million euros and Sancho's saying, I want to go? Do you think Dortmund 
will just say no we're not doing anything or, or do you think i suppose the question is how do you think there is a chance that he will be at dortmund next season or do you think that all clubs will find a way no because um you know dortmund uh, has learned of uh, dembele they have learned uh, also of obama young you already have in, in the premier league um they won't allow that some, such things happen again that the player don't go to to the training or because and um, you know um they got a lot of money for for such players but uh, there are taxes and there are agents so at least there wasn't so much money left at the end where they can buy really good new players and uh, you know if you have sancho one year more it's uh, also a very uh, very good thing it's it's not money but it's it's uh, it's sport and um you know uh, the team was very very disappointed at uh, they had lost a uh, season, no chance again for the German Championship. And uh, eight championships in a row for Bayern Munich is, is not so, so easy for Dortmund. Um, I think uh, your Premier League clubs uh, wouldn't allow that also. Um, and I think in the board, um, they know that there is a very, very important thing that they next year can uh, make a competition with Bayern Munich. And uh, so if they have a good squad, and with Sancho, the squad is a little bit better. And um, perhaps I would keep him if they don't pay the price. And I've been talking to Marco Royce, for example. He's the captain of the team. He said he's trying everything to put him there in Dortmund. I was talking to Emre Can, who is perhaps one of the best players to talk about Premier League at Dortmund. He said, oh, I'm doing everything that Sancho will stay. So, Hey, this is such a boys, uh, they try and um, they have a good community. So perhaps it's enough that he stay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Jesse Lingard and Marcus Rashford are trying to get him the other way as well. I mean, everybody, he's, he's, everybody does. <laughs> yeah, he's getting pulled all over the place. Do you, I mean, just two final things on Sancho before we talk about something else. Um, do you think anybody else is in for Sancho, i.e. maybe a Chelsea or a, or a Bayern Munich or a Real Madrid? Or do you really just think it will be Manchester United or he stays at Dortmund? I think uh, United is leading the race, that's clear. Mm. Sancho is very clear in this question too. I was very impressed uh, when the first time uh, I, I had to do with him, um, he had a very, very nice offer also for Bayern Munich. So I was sure that uh, Bayern Munich has a big chance because often, you know, uh, if you can go to Bayern Munich or you can do, go to Dortmund, um, you know, if you win a, want to win titles, you go to Bayern Munich. But um, Sancho was, a, it was not Bayern Munich who said, no, we don't pay the price. It was Sancho who said, no, uh, I don't go to Bayern Munich. I don't take the money of Bayern Munich. I go to, to Dortmund because I want the education there. And just was very impressing. And uh, so uh, you see, he's very clear in his decisions. And so if he felt in love with United, so he will do it. Yeah, I think um, that's, I mean, I, that's something we've sort of spoken about over in England about Sancho, how impressive he was that he left Manchester City and Pep Guardiola to go to abroad to Germany and build. He basically wanted to play first team football and build his career. And he could have stayed at Manchester City and maybe he would not he would not have got the, the game time he got at Dortmund. So, yes, um, but I heard that it was not a good relationship to Pep. I think um, there were talks between uh, Bayern Munich, uh, who have a very close uh, uh, how you catch a relationship to, to Pep and um, he wasn't the coach who said uh, you have to if you have a chance take Sancho uh, but uh, he was not 100% sure that he will do his way and Bayern Munich uh, is listening what Pep Guardiola says so perhaps this was uh, perhaps one keystone because not everybody at Bayern Munich was absolutely um, sure that they have to get him now they know better. But um, so I think there was a good reason why he left City and I think it was the right one. Um, and just finally on Sancho before we move on, um, not a lot of people talking about this at the moment, but if if if, if Sancho does go to Manchester United, um, are you hearing about Dortmund because they will want to be competitive next year? Have they, are they targeting any Sancho replacements? I know Ferran Torres was mentioned before. Um, is there any movement around Dortmund looking at options if Sancho does leave or will they stick with the squad they have? No, I think I don't I don't think that Torres will, will do the way to Dortmund. Um, I've heard about a few players that are watching 
but um, I don't think um, they're really sure that they have to do this. And the, and the talks with the agents are not 100% sure, um, like Dortmund, is if they want to have a player. But um, you know best at United, uh, they have Bellingham now. <laughs> yes, they so. do. Have, yeah. <laughs> Just on, on Bellingham, I mean, that's very recent news. And I'm, I must say, um, you worried me back in March when I saw your tweet saying that Dortmund are re leading the race because I remembered back in December, um, also a very very sim i don't know whether it came from you in december but i certainly read it through sport build that harland and dortmund were re leading the race in mid-december and ali gunnar solskjaer in his press conference was smiling and i was like no we're we we're leading the race for harland uh, you can tell by ali's body language so i got very 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 concerned in march when you said that because i thought he's going to end up at dortmund and that's what's happened this is this is a fantastic i mean not not a cheap signing as well he's on about 50, 60,000 euros a week um, and 20 yeah. million pounds. A very, but but Dortmund again, just doing what Dortmund do. It's it's an exciting signing. Yeah, but um, you always said it. It's, you know, as a young player, I think it's a really, really, a really good step to go there because um, you have uh, now in the Premier League of Pulisic, you know, that everybody sees, hey, there I can play. And, uh, you know, they play a Champions League every year. So it's not like playing somewhere in uh, the, the desert. So um, it's, uh, I don't know if you've been in the stadium. I think it's, uh, if you're uh, sitting in there um, and they play, you never know, walk alone. I know you don't like the song, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really amazing it's, uh, to hear it also in Dortmund. And uh, they have a fantastic atmosphere. They have fantastic fans and um, they have a, young players play and then and, and they play on a really really high level so um that's the big chance of dortmund because the, the big stars are going to buy munich but the big talents at the moment they go to dortmund so you never know we might be having this same conversation in three years time about bellingham to manchester united but i, I, I look I, <laughs> everybody who watches this channel knows because so i actually we we develop him and educate the players and then you can buy it for a lot of money that would be a deal yeah yeah definitely well it's, better. it's almost it is a little bit like that i mean i was going to ask you that as well do you think um we have a we have a, another journalist who works for sky sports he's a manchester united um james cooper and he was saying i've got no knowledge about this but i you know i could see a scenario that dortmund get bellingham and sancho comes to united is that do you think there's anything in that, or do you think it's just Dortmund won Bellingham and you will pay 100 million pounds for Sancho, or do you think there might have been some little sort of, uh, sort of, what, what, what would you call it? I suppose an agreement that we'll no, have Bellingham no. and you can have Sancho. No, in this business, there are no agreements. There's just money, and um, I think they see something in Bellingham which is uh, Sancho-like, and mm -hmm. uh, I think um, you know. If Sancho comes this year, I believe in that to, to United. Uh, or next year, it doesn't matter because um, they have to develop this player, Bellingham, and uh, they s give the players time. You know, so also Robert, Robert Lewandowski uh, had one or two years in Dortmund to learn before he get uh, this world class player he is now. And uh, so they put it step by step because uh, Dortmund knows very well. That uh, you can't buy a talent and um, it works uh, at the first moment. And that's why they did Bellingham. And uh, if Sancho will go to the Premier League, they have him. Uh, if he stays, uh, they have both. It's like it's like Erling Haaland, as we were talking about. He he you would imagine that with especially with his agent, Mino Riola, maybe two years he will be going somewhere for, for big money and, and Dortmund will then go and buy another young player from somewhere that uh, everybody wants. Just very quickly on Thiago. Um, Thiago is obviously at Bayern Munich. Um, there was a bit of a link with Manchester United. And I saw you tweeting out saying that in the executive area of Bayern, there was a feeling that maybe there was an interest from Manchester United. Liverpool, obviously, strong interest. Um, do, you, do, do you think this might be just Manchester United's name being used to maybe bump the price? Or, or do you genuinely think that that is a player that United might be looking at? No, I think um, Thiago indeed is a big riddle for Bayern Munich as well, because uh, till now he didn't tell the board uh, where he want to go and uh, he said, I don't uh, sign the new contract. Uh, he said, uh, you must think I'm crazy. 
but uh, they don't uh, know what he's doing next and they're waiting already every day for offer and uh, uh, it's, you're, you're right, uh, so true, uh, it was a tweet of mine. And there are two things which are around the club, the rumors. There's one in the dressing room and I think the players are very close to Thiago. This is the Liverpool one uh, that why we wrote about that. Now we know a little bit more that uh, Klopp is also excited from the player. But you know Klopp also wanted to, to get Werner and uh, <laughs> he didn't get him. So um, that's not uh, safe that uh, Thiago will go there if he wants to go there and Kl Klopp wants to have him. And um, you know the, the board of Bayern Munich has a close relationship to United. Uh, big clubs are talking always um, and uh, I think uh, they count one and one together and saw so which, which clubs have money to pay Thiago and um, these rumors from the board are things uh, I think they they know also a little bit so I don't think uh, there's nothing between United but I think uh, if Thiago can choose perhaps at the moment it would be Liverpool but if there's no offer you know um, there are not so many many clubs who can pay the price and uh, Bayern won't let him go f for nothing so I think uh, I heard about uh, perhaps 20 million Liverpool are thinking about and uh, but Bayern Munich wants 35 or 40 so um, you're welcome to to get into the poker <laughs> yeah i remember you uh, we'll, we'll talk about Havertz in a minute actually in the poker game because <laughs> I, I i i was uh, i think i replied to that tweet and said well we're out then because we won't be able to get in that poker game but with i mean you mentioned Werner there and and that's uh that is you know if, if there are manchester united fans out there that that are interested in tiago then maybe there is some encouragement because i was very surprised that timo Werner ended up going to chelsea because you know, I know a lot of Liverpool fans and I, I thought, you know, I hoped Manchester United would be in the race, but I really thought Liverpool would get that deal done, especially with such a, he's a bargain at 50 million with the release clause. And then for whatever reason, Liverpool didn't uh, do the deal and, and Chelsea swooped in. And as we know, it's looking good with, with, with Havertz. But um, is so with Werner, so with yeah, Werner I can say you, you've been in the top three. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I think it wasn't, uh, the last step was not so concrete like Chelsea was. Mm -hmm. So when Liverpool was out, um, United was the second team who had a chance. But uh, after Liverpool wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't able to spend the money, um, it was uh, very, very fast to go to Chelsea. But United was had a little chance. Little chance gone now. He he will do. He he's a good player. I like Timo Werner, and Havertz. I mean, this was. Um, I don't know when he, when you tweeted this out. I think it might have been sort of April time. You mentioned a number of teams. I think Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Chelsea, Manchester United, all on the poker table for Havertz. Is it? It's just Chelsea now. Everyone else has just backed away. Yeah, there were indeed in January. The agents of Havertz uh, told Leverkusen, it's his club. Uh, the interested in teams and um, there was a, a big row of, of teams uh, you mentioned a few and uh, you started uh, with the, the right teams uh, I think uh, at the first moment uh, Harvard was thinking about Real he was thinking about Bayern Munich and he was thinking of Barca but um, that wasn't possible for him um, and not possible for the clubs who were interested but not so concrete and the list was getting shorter and shorter <laughs> and uh, I think at the moment, indeed, um, it's just Chelsea. So the player um, would like to go there at the moment because they want him. They showed him that they want to have him in the squad. He wouldn't be player number 13 or 14. He would be one of the important players. And, you know, um, these are young guys. He knows Timo Werner. He knows Antonio Rüdiger. Uh, it's a, like, a little bit like United and, and Rushford and Sancho and everybody. That That is also always an argument, you know. And um, because um, Harvitz is, I talked with Günther Netzer, which is one of our best players ever. And he said uh, he will be the next big thing in, in, in football. And not only German football, So, um, but he needs time. And I think at Chelsea, he has a young team where he can develop himself and the team so i think it's a very interesting option that he will go there i think it will happen it's again a question of money at the moment but um i think if you would ask 
maybe seven months ago. Oh yeah, Harvards himself. He wouldn't say Chelsea, but uh, at the moment, uh, I think it will happen. I think Chelsea are one of those clubs that in this horrible coronavirus pandemic that we've had, they they have benefited, and it's not their fault, but they have benefited because the teams like Real Madrid's and the Bayern Munich's and the Barcelona's, they, they just don't have the money to spend this summer. And then, but you've still got these quality players like Werner and Havertz, who and Sancho as well, who want to move. But Chelsea and Chelsea are one of the few clubs that have got the money because of their ban last year and and, and Abramovich. So that they're they're benefiting. And as you say, I think I think both of those players are fantastic young players, and they will do very very well for Chelsea. So um, unfortunately for a Manchester United fan, I, I do I do think that will be the case. Um, Bayern Munich is a club that you follow very closely. This is not really a story, it's just more of a theory, actually. So I was going to ask you if you think Bayern Munich will be buying any more players because if Thiago did leave, I think Donny van der Beek from Ajax would be a good sort of young midfielder that's available that you could imagine playing for Bayern Munich or Real Madrid or Manchester United. You've bought Leroy Sane. Do you think that there is um, more money for Bayern Munich to spend, and 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 would sort of Van der Beek, sort of midfielder, be somebody they would they would look at? So Bayern Munich is a, a very typical German club, um, just spending money which they earned. That's one of the biggest rules. So I think at the beginning of this crazy transfer market, they had one target, and this was Leroy Sane. You know. We, we write since one year about Leroy. Yes. And now, <laughs> now, now we have him. And uh, many City fans uh, hate me for my tweets now, but uh, I told them it's true. He will come and he came. But, um, you know, 49 million euros uh, uh, plus 11, perhaps, if they win the Champions League a few <laughs> times next in the next years. So we won't pay everything. Um, but um, this is still an, a lot of money, and um, they have Kwasi. You know, he's a big talent. Um, he didn't cost a fee, but of course he has to. You have to pay a signing fee. You have to pay the agents. Um, the same thing at Nübel, which is a very big talent uh, in, in, in at the goalkeeper position. He has to wait uh, if uh, when uh, Neuer retires. So remember his name. I think uh, you're also thinking about goalkeepers at the moment. I saw saw your last match. Unfortunately, so, yes. <laughs> so um, I think he can be also really good. And I'm to telling you that why I think this is the concept of Bayern Munich at the moment. I think we don't know the name um, at the moment they will do next. Uh, also, if Thiago leaves, I think they will get some player like Harvards. Not such a big name but, uh, like Harvards but also not, not such a big transfer fee like Harvard's. And they're searching at the moment, are discussing such players. I think the, um, the others you, you mentioned are already too big for this concept. But, um, you know, you don't know at the moment how much money they get for Thiago. So it's difficult also to plan. But um, one bad thing for you at United. So um, we know that... Um, United was very, very interested in, in getting to this so in winter uh, for a loan. Um, I don't think if uh, we lose Thiago at Bayern Munich, they will uh, sell to this so They try to sell him indeed in the summer. And I think um, United would be a very good option. But um, I think they can't lose so many players on this position. But as you see, um, they have enough players on this position if they don't sell. Yeah, Taliso is a player that um, we, we had been linked to um, and he's still relatively quite young. I know he's had his injury problems, but um, that, that's quite encouraging then because I do think that, like Havertz, Van der Beek um, is a player that will want to leave Ajax this summer and Manchester United do need a midfielder. Um, we've been linked to Grealish in England as well, so maybe, I mean, maybe we can benefit like Chelsea have where there's a player that wants to move and not a lot of people have the money to go after him. Um, Centre-back is an issue that Manchester United need to uh, address. Uh, and another another player from the German league um, playing at Leipzig uh, is uh, Up Meccano. Now, I think the situation with him is that he's got one year left on his contract. There's been talk of maybe signing a contract. There's been links to Arsenal and Manchester United and, and everybody else. Um, have you heard anything around um, Up Meccano and his future and a potential move to the Premier League? I think um, we mentioned Kouassi before. So I think that's a good sign for you at the Premier League. Um, 
I'm not sure if they will do Opomagana as well. If I think they will, Bayern Munich will watch now the season, uh, the next season, how he's doing Kwasi. And um, then if it works, I don't think they will do Upamakana as well, but we have to see because Boateng is perhaps leaving, um, but perhaps also one year later now. Uh, so I can imagine that Upamakana signs a new contract at, at Leipzig. They're trying to do that. Uh, it's not sure that he will, um, but I think the way of Upamakana will be the Premier League. Uh, it was very, very closely linked with Arsenal. I heard that it's not the first option. So, um, I think United has a chance, of course. It's all going to be about the money this summer, I think, and obviously not a lot of people have a lot of money. Um, the transfer window is opening um, in, I think it opens in about a week or two for the Premier League. Um, as somebody, we'll talk about in a minute, your sort of your transfer, um, you know, daily life, as we spoke with Fabrizio, but are you expecting... Um, major deals this transfer window or do you think it will just be around hopefully a Sancho and a Havertz to Chelsea and they will be the big deals or do you think we might see some big swap deals or, or other clubs moving in the market? Yeah, I think um, I think indeed that Harvard's and uh, already Werner and Sunny is also a big deal so don't forget um, but yes. you saw also in Pjanic and Artur that uh, the swap deals <laughs> are modern at the moment and I think this will happen this summer. And uh, I heard about uh, Harvard that we all tried to make it, but uh, Leverkusen is not so keen on that one um, because um, the Germans, I told you before, they like to do it uh, the traditional way. They want the money and spend it like they want. But uh, if you ask me, if there's a bigger deal at the moment at, at Harvard or, or Sané, I'm not sure because uh, there are no many big players on the market this season who has the money to pay it. We don't know what will happen with Newcastle, you know, if, if, if such things will, will be, then uh, I think <laughs> we see a, a lot, lot of big trenches next uh, this summer. But uh, if everything is normal, uh, Barca won't do it. I heard they have perhaps, they have money left for, for one shot. But it will not be more than 80 if, if Harvard's get the price. Um, so I think 80 million is a, is a big benchmark for this summer. And if Chelsea do that, uh, including uh, ads, because um, by Leverkusen wants 100. So, but um, 80 is a good price. And I don't think there will be more money spent it on one play. Unless it's Jaden Sancho. I forget Jaden Sancho, of course, because if you're so crazy to doing that, uh, you're welcome. To... <laughs> well, ho hopefully Dortmund will do an add-on. Hopefully Dortmund will let us do add-ons as well, but I don't know. You know, maybe they'll let us do 80 plus. To play. No, no, no. You're right. Sancho could be the the biggest one, but uh, it's a big price. It is a big price. I think if we hadn't had coronavirus, um, 100 million for Jaden Sancho is very very fair but i just think in the current market it's it's a very big amount of money to to spend on 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 a player in the with the financial markets the way they are but obviously dortmund will we will see how how stubborn they are on that and how much they uh, they want to move on that yes and um, to talk about uh, Dembele again you know there was also a big part of money but it was not paid at one moment so I think uh, if, if uh, Sancho will bring uh, the 80 millions like Howard said uh, the first, it could be possible. But uh, the next year you have to pay also. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it? It's always good at the start. But then when you the next summer, you think, oh, I've got I've still got to pay that one off. It's yeah. uh, It can impact next summer. Um, I, I, I do want to talk to you about um, the, the, the sort of the job that you do, because... To, to get the information that you get and be very accurate with it. Um, how you, we, we have, the, we asked Fabrizio, who I know you, you, you have a relationship with as well. And he said, I don't sleep. It's, it, it is constant um, messaging and calls and, and people, but you, you have a lot of respect from that. How, how is, is your day quite similar to that? Is it nonstop and, you know, constantly talking to people? My wife hates it, of course. 
um, <laughs> but uh, indeed uh, you, you can't watch a film uh, in the evening with, with your wife uh, and the handy is not going the whole time. You have to, to, to watch and think, what, who is calling uh, if something happens? So yes, that's true. Uh, it's, um, we are not, not, we're very busy for in the transfer window, but uh, I think this is also uh, the salt in the soup, we say. I hope, don't know if the, there's the same expression in England. Uh, it's making a lot of fun. But uh, I think the, the worst thing on this is uh, if you have a good information and you know that everybody want to get this information, um, you have to be very careful with it because um, you have to check it once, you have to double, perhaps three times, and because if you write it and it's not true, so that's not so nice in the internet. Um, and are you aware on uh, social media like Twitter? Are you how how do you find that? Because it's you you will tweet about one thing and then you've got loads of people asking you about something else. Um, but look, I can tell you that your reputation is very very good, um, especially over the last sort of year. So you are you are held up as you know like Fabrizio, somebody who is very reliable. Um, how 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 is you know obviously you've been doing this for a long time and social media certainly around transfers has changed a lot in, in recent times. How how do you, do you do you enjoy that side of things and the interaction? Oh, I love it because um, um, I have also not only the Twitter one I have also a Facebook group just with Bayern Munich fans and um, the people know so many things you know they read everything I can't speak so many languages I'm three but. Uh, there's always somebody who can read Spanish or Chinese or, and they, they tell me and they ask me. And sometimes um, it's a Twitter follower who bring me a story and just asking that Christian, is, is that true? And I, oh, I don't know if that's true, but I will check. And then my job started. So um, I, um, before we were journalists, we were a gatekeeper and can uh, decide this is a breaking news that's getting out. No, we keep that one day longer in the newspaper, perhaps uh, we wait uh, for the magazine, but this time's are over. So um, everything is, is now immediately out. So we have to be a little bit quicker than before. But um, the people help us because uh, if, if one follower is writing it, uh, perhaps it's nothing serious. But if uh, 100 or 1,000 are asking this question, we have to be very, very quick. <laughs> No, we're exactly the same here. We do a show at eight o'clock, which is a live show, and we have the live comments. And I'll have the things I want to talk about, and then you'll see the live comments, and you see seven or eight people talking about something, and you'll think, right, I better go. To yeah, something's happened, and then you're talking. The, the modern football fan is so, and and they're everywhere. You know, everybody watches football everywhere, and um, the knowledge out there is fantastic. And it's great that you know. I know Fabrizio said it as well, and it's great that. That you enjoy that interaction because I know everyone who's going to watch this are going to be like they'll give you a follow and they'll you know they, they, they will love that. Um, is I think I might know the answer, but is Leroy Sane the, the your favourite story that you've known about uh, for a long time? Because as I said, Bellingham in March, you were right about that. We know that Erling Haaland, Havertz, you've spoken about that. You've been quite accurate on quite a lot of stories, and you know one of the first people on those. What's your favourite? Um, sort of transfer that you've had so far that you've, you know, you've, you've sort of been ahead of everybody else on? So it was uh, the most uh, exciting story, I think, because uh, it was, I can't remember a transfer where you uh, had so, so many months, you have always asked again and asked again. And uh, we're talking about the follower. And they were really, really hard uh, because there were moments uh, they said, hey, no, Christian, you're not true. You're wrong. He's not going to burn me. But, um, uh, I think um, I was very, very uh, calm because I was very sure that he will come, but it wasn't sure when he comes. So perhaps this uh, was a transfer of this season where I had uh, much heart in it because uh, it was uh, it was uh, important for me to be true. But there were many exciting uh, transfers uh, in the last years. Uh, I know when I get a lot of followers from United when I was. Uh, reporting about Bastian Schweinsteiger is going to to your club. <laughs> I, that's my favorite, one of my favorite transfers. I love Bastian Schweinsteiger and I remember that story breaking and I, I did a video about like half past 11 at night and I was just like, I love this player, I love this player. It's such a shame, probably not a shame for you as Bayern Munich, but it's such a shame for Manchester United that we got him a little bit too old with a bit too yes. many injuries because yes, it's fantastic. 
Yeah, that was a problem, but um, you know, um, I know Bastian since he's a boy. Uh, he was uh, living in the same area like me. We started our careers uh, at the same time. So, and uh, when I wrote the story, <laughs> um, the first idea of your club was a swap deal with Di Maria. Uh, when I was reporting that, everybody said I'm I'm crazy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, but I said no, there's something, and this club uh, wants him really, and I know. Because uh, when I think when Bastian was about 18 or 19, we played PlayStation and uh, he chose Manchester United. And I said, okay, <laughs> I will think about it in a, in a few years. And uh, I don't know if you know the story. Uh, I wrote also that he had uh, um, on his bell in his flat in, in, in Munich, he had the name Eric Cantona. All right. <laughs> yes. So I knew that uh, it's a big thing for him. Uh, to play for your club and uh, that's why I was very very sure that if there's a chance and he had problems with Guardiola so um, that was also really really big story and uh, I got a lot of followers from you so thank you for that <laughs> well look you know what I hope I, I'm sure you'll get a lot of followers from this um, um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure you'll get a lot more followers if this Jaden Sancho story does develop into um, into something firm I know where we're at with this situation with Sancho and, and obviously Manchester United have got to um, hit the hit the fee, but that's what they've got to do. Um, but just as just as a final question, do you you know it's only an opinion? It's not something. Do you think that Sancho will be at Dortmund next year? So I think um, not true. I think uh, perhaps we lose him and uh, he will play for Premier League, but it's not decided yet. It's not. Um, absolutely loved having you on, Christian. Um, real pleasure um, to have you on. And, and you've answered so much. And I think we could talk for a long, long time. But um, um, at CFR Bayern, oh, sorry, at CF Bayern on Twitter. I know I'll drop the link in the video description as well. But uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, hopefully we'll get you on again at some point. Yeah, thank you very much. And, you know, we, we in German, you know, in Bavaria, we say um, Servus. That means. Hello and goodbye as well. Thank you very much for coming on. Bye-bye.